Hello guys, this is Pavel Oskarov from Laravel Daily Team with you again and today I'm talking to you right in front of the camera on my MacBook without any PHP Storm open because I want to talk about some philosophical things including code examples. I want to talk about refactoring. I want to give you two tips uh, how to avoid big refactorings in the middle of the project, Laravel project, or actually any project to be honest, but Laravel specific example. Uh, so imagine you're starting a project, uh, quite a big one, like a few months or even half a year, and it all seems pretty clear at the beginning. You've, you've done your due diligence, you have the specification, it's all pretty clear, but usually it happens in the middle of the project that things start go sideways. Something, some new requirements come up, some new details that weren't too clear, something is not working properly and you have to change some things, uh, clients change their mind, that happens often, then they have, they have discussions about the budget and scope and all of that. Uh, and how to avoid that? There are multiple ways to avoid that. Um, I've done it time and time again, even now currently, like a few weeks ago, I had a problem where I had to change quite a lot of code in the middle of the project. That's pretty painful, uh, but there is Kind of, there are two things you can do to avoid that. Uh, of course, it comes down to planning up front. So before writing any line of code, you have to get all the details from the client, including quite technical questions. So even if the client is not technical, you have to ask uh, whether the project is multi-language, for example, or if there are payments uh, included so what would be the currency for example will you use like currency rates or something like that um, actually with currency my last example was uh, the client wanted to use stripe for payments and that's fine and and they the requirement was uh, that um, how was it? it was something like uh, we have to support all the currencies that are supported by stripe easily right so just list all the currencies but what wasn't in the specification and what I realized uh, only in the middle of the project that currencies depend on the country so depending on what is the country of users uh, stripe account we had stripe connect there uh, basically so so it depends on, on user stripe account so if the stripe account is from UK uh, it's probably will be British pounds and as the first language as the first uh, currency uh, if it's from Asia or from uh, from Latin America or from whatever country, the currency might be really different, including like Brazil, which is only starting using Stripe, so they have only one currency. Uh, so that so for that we have to, we had to create separate entity in the database so with a pivot a pivot table of countries and currencies. So that wasn't in the scope. Uh, my point is, uh, you have to ask those details up front, and uh, the more you get them, the better will be uh, the middle of the project. And with that comes my main tip. So I have two tips here. First tip, how to avoid uh, refactoring, is the database structure up front. So before writing any code, uh, just make, make a schema of your database structure with whatever tools you have. It can be pen and paper, it can be things like MySQL Workbench, uh, it may be actually, <laughs> fun fact, for, for our team we use our own quick admin panel to mock up the project basically and provide the client. So we, we use our admin generator so you can create CRUD by CRUD which creates database migrations, then we run those migrations and then I open MySQL Workbench and do database reverse engineering. Uh, I'll actually I'll link uh, another video in the description where I do exactly that. I show you how it's done. Uh, so whatever tool you use, uh, the final should be the database schema with all the fields, with all the relationships and uh, all, all the tables. With that, uh, you need to double check with the client. So did I understand correctly that these users should belong there. So that record belongs to the user and not to the account. Especially that's, uh, that's painful with roles, permissions, accounts uh, and stuff like that. So whether a relationship is, uh, belongs to or belongs to many. Is it, is it uh, one, to, one to many or many to many? So for example, can user have one role or multiple roles? So, uh, or that 
entry belongs to the user or to user parents like company things like that uh, if you realize that in the middle of the project it will force quite a lot of refactoring including relationships including code uh, well a lot of things so the more thing with the database you get clear up front the better and the database schema actually the whole table t table view will help you understand the whole project even better so you will have clear clear vision in your mind what belongs where and then from there it's much easier to to create models controllers all the MVC stuff uh, so I encourage you to start from the database uh, and then you will avoid refactoring with that comes kind of a bonus tip tip number two specific for Laravel uh, I encourage you to use scopes quite a lot so instead of adding uh, for example Mm, in various places you can you have to check if the user is admin uh, admin role so instead of uh, adding everywhere where user role equals one for example or role ID equals one or, or something like that you create a scope uh, inside of your user model for example so scope admin uh, and then you you put your uh, admin where statement there in one place only in the model and then you reuse it every time you need so in your controller or in your probably controller or service you'll have scope admin or, or something like a user with scope admin uh, and then if you want to change it in the middle of the project all you would need to change is actually one place in the scope in the model and that's really helpful and that's even more readable because in the code if you, in the code of controller you have a user with role id1 doesn't really say much what is role ID1 uh, or probably should be role admin maybe uh, but it's not that clear but if you have a readable code in the controller like user with scope admin then it's clear for the developer what it does and then how that admin is implemented it's in the scope in the model so I do advise to use scopes wherever possible wherever you feel that that uh, that condition could be reusable or could change potentially so that my tip number two uh, is use scopes uh, so that's basically all I wanted to talk uh, today about refactoring and how to avoid it so I I will repeat myself I advise you to use database schema a lot and start from there and then your project which will, will get will get much smoother and with that, I wish you a great day. Uh, if you want to help me or my team uh, by supporting this channel, you can subscribe or check out our Laravel admin panel at quickadminpanel.com. See you in the next videos of Laravel Daily Video Channel.